So we are looking at the book of Acts, but because today we begin our new sermon series on the Gospel of Mark, I wanted us to look at some places uh, in the book of Acts which tell us more uh, about Mark. Those of you who attended the first service, you already know a little bit, but you didn't have a chance to look at the at the passages, right? So I would like us to go over those passages. Now, who is Mark? Is he one of the apostles? Mark, why did he write the gospel? Maybe he was one of the 12. Maybe yes, maybe no, right? Who knows? I know. Yeah? You can say. You can say, because you <laughs> Right, so. Yeah, he wasn't one of the apostles, right? So he wasn't one of the apostles. So now, why did he write the gospel, and what can we learn about uh, Mark? Well, uh, I can tell you that Mark was neither prophet, nor apostle, nor pastor, nor uh, church leader. He was a helper. He was a helper. Okay, he helped two apostles, the Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul, okay? And uh, uh, he's a very interesting figure because at some point uh, he deserts, he leaves the Apostle Paul and Paul fires him, you know. Uh, but then they reconnect and then they reconcile. Okay, let us have a look at, uh, at Mark, Acts chapter 12. In this chapter, we see the name of Mark mentioned for the first time, and it is in verse uh, 12. When he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. So this is the first mention of Mark. Uh, what is the context? Uh, if we go to verse 1, uh, we can see... Who, can, can someone read, uh, Marv, can you read it for us? Oh, no, you don't have, do you have the text? You don't? Yeah, I can read it. Y yes. <laughs> yes, now we need a gift of interpretation. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> gift of interpret. Let me interpret. And uh, that would be me. That, that, that would be me. About that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. And it looks like the church has already existed in Jerusalem for some time for years. Uh, he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And uh, James, um, James uh, is uh, one of the twelve. Did you find it? I did. Uh, okay, so he was one of the twelve. Uh, so he is the first apostle who is killed, James. So he is not the first martyr. We read in the book of Acts about Stephen, but he wasn't uh, one of the twelve. So James is the first one, James the brother of John. John uh, the apostle who wrote the Gospel of John, who wrote the book of Revelation, right? His brother was killed, executed. Uh, and it was done by Herod. And Herod, uh, he did it because he wanted to please Jews. He killed James the brother of John with a sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also, because Peter is another apostle, you know, who preached the gospel. He's another leader, okay? This was during the days of unleavened bread, and when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him. So that's a lot of soldiers. Intending, after the Passover, to bring him out to the people and to execute him as well. So that was the plan. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. Okay, the church is praying for him. Now, when Herod was about to bring him out, on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, well, because Herod was afraid. We know that they, there were thousands of Christians already at that moment, and they were afraid that they will break in and, uh, you know... Uh, rescue Peter, right? So that is why so many soldiers. And Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, 
and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and the light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hand. And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know that what was being done by the angel was real. He thought it was a vision. He thought, because it's night, you know, what is happening? But thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went out and went along one street, and immediately the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I'm sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. So his execution. So when he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. And when he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhonda came to answer, recognizing Peter's voice in her joy. She did not open the gate, but ran in and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. They said to her, you are out of your mind. But she kept insisting, that it was so, and very often here uh, commentators would say, well, they gathered to pray for him. Now when God delivers, they don't believe that it happened, right? You're out of your mind, you know. So why are you praying in the first place, right? So that's a good question. So, but Peter continued knocking, and when they opened, they saw him and were amazed. By motioning to them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. He said, tell these things to James. Now, this is a different James. This is half-brother of Jesus, James, uh, and he is the leader of uh, the church in Jerusalem. And to the brothers, then he departed and went to another place. So, Mark is not important at all at this moment, right? So, we know his mom, his mom Mary, and there are many Marys in the Bible and in the church, and they used his name just to say which Mary, you know, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark. So, then what we see in the next chapter we see that now that there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, and Saul. Saul is Paul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart from me Barnabas and Saul to the work to which I have called them. They came to Jerusalem to bring uh, uh, money from the church in Antioch. The church in Antioch sends some money to Jerusalem. So uh, at the end of chapter 12, verse 25, Barnabas and Saul, they returned from Jerusalem when they had completed their service, and their service was to bring money uh, to the church in Jerusalem because they were, uh, they were um, starving. Okay? So, and this is what we see. They had completed their service, bringing with them John, whose other name was Mark. Okay, so now we see that John is in Jerusalem. His mom is active in the church. Uh, John is a young guy. John or Mark. You know, Mark is a young guy, and uh, he listens to Peter. He has heard the message of the apostle Peter multiple times, right? So now Paul comes to Jerusalem and Barnabas. And when they leave, Mark joins them. And now he goes to Antioch. Now, why he goes to Antioch? Because Barnabas is his cousin. They are related. And they are from the tribe of Levi. They were, were helpers at the temple. Okay? So, he, we see the role of Mark is helper. He's helping uh, Peter. He's helping Paul. Then he's helping Peter again. And then he's helping Paul again. So, yeah, now when we go to chapter 13, we can see that uh, the church in Antioch 
sent, so it's verse 2, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And uh, this is first missionary trip of the Apostle Paul. He uh, made uh, three trips altogether. This is his first trip. Okay, and they go to uh, Cyprus. They go to Cyprus and uh, they uh, meet a lot of resistance. Uh, so, um, for example, uh, let us go to verse 8. Uh, but Elimas, the magician, for that was the meaning of his name, opposed them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. He was called the son of the devil, the enemy of all righteousness in verse 10. So there is a lot of opposition. It doesn't go well. And at this moment, Mark deserts them. He leaves them. It doesn't go well. At the end of chapter 15, here we can see uh, that Mark is mentioned again. And after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us return and visit the brothers in every city where we proclaim the word of the Lord and how they are. Now Barnabas wanted to take with him John called Mark. But Paul thought best not to take with them the one who had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Okay, he, it didn't go well, it was difficult, maybe he was afraid, maybe for some reason he left them. So, this is the guy who wrote the Gospel of Mark, right? So, this is him. And there arose a sharp disagreement so that they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. Barnabas takes his cousin with him, right? So, and they sailed to Cyprus because Barnabas is from Cyprus. So he's sailing to his home country, home area. So, but Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commanded by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So this is his second missionary trip. Paul uh, is disappointed in, in Mark, who is also called John. Uh, but when we look at what happened to uh, Paul in Rome and uh, uh, his relationship with Mark in Rome, we can find out something interesting. Paul was arrested two times in Rome. One time he was arrested and released, and second time he was arrested and executed. Okay, so when he was arrested for the first time, he wrote letters to Colossians, Ephesians, uh, yeah, those letters. And when we read uh, his letter to Colossians, if you open Colossians chapter uh, 4, verse 10, can somebody read it for us? Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, and Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning you have received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. Yeah, something changed, right? He is with me. He is now with Paul. He is serving him again. Ten years later, after that argument, when, when Paul didn't want to take him with, uh, take Mark uh, with him, so ten years later, we see that he is with Paul. He is helping him. This is the first uh, imprisonment of the Apostle Paul. Second one, when he was executed, he wrote Second Timothy. Let us uh, open Second Timothy, chapter four. And it's uh, verse 9 through 11. Wh who can read it for us? Did you find it? Second Timothy? Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas in love with this present world has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Okay, Crescens <coughs> has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Okay, you see? So now he's very useful for my ministry. You can see from this fearful 
guy who was afraid, you know, all the difficulties and opposition who abandoned the Apostle Paul. Now he is reformed. Now he is with Paul when Paul is arrested for the first time. Now he is with Paul when Paul is arrested for the second time. So, and he, Paul wants Timothy and he wants Mark, both of them. Okay. And Luke, who is the author of the Gospel of Luke, is already with him. Right? So, okay, so where was Mark for those 10 years prior to when we hear about him, like uh, in, in Colossians chapter 4? First uh, arrest of the Apostle Paul. So he is in Rome and he is with Peter. He's with Peter. Let us look at Peter. First Peter, chapter 5, verse 12 and 13. Who can read it for us? By Stephanas, a faithful brother, as I regard him, mm -hmm. I have previously written to you, exhorting and declaring that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. She who is at Babylon, who is likewise chosen, sends you grace, and so does Mark. Okay, so uh, Babylon uh, is Rome. It's a code word for Rome. And the persecutions of Christians have already started. And, of course, Peter didn't want to say, well, Rome. You know, he uses this code word, says Babylon. So, but it's Rome. She who is in Babylon, it's the church. The church of Rome. And sends you her greetings, and so does my son Mark. We see Mark was with Peter. Church history tells us that he was Peter's translator and interpreter. He knew Latin. Peter didn't. So when you are in Rome, he was helping him with, you know, preaching and translating, you know, the message. So now let us put together all these pieces and let us see what we know about Mark now. Who would like to summarize it for us? So, it starts with the house of Mary, the mother of Mark, you know, in the in, uh, book of Acts chapter 12. Then we learn about him joining uh, Paul and Barnabas, then abandoning Paul and Barnabas, and uh, Paul is not happy with that. He even has big dispute with Barnabas, and they even part their ways because of that. We know that Barnabas is his cousin, is Mark's cousin, right? So, and then we see that Mark joins Peter, and for many years he is with Peter in Rome. And Peter dies in Rome. He is crucified in Rome, right? And then we see that after that, Mark is with the Apostle Paul. First imprisonment, second imprisonment, and Paul is, uh, dies there as well, right? So, um, he wasn't a church leader, he wasn't a prophet, he wasn't an apostle, a pastor, an evangelist, he was a helper. And still the Holy Spirit used him to write the gospel. Isn't that amazing? What did you learn? What, what, do you, what, what do you think about him? How did your understanding of Mark change? So, Lori. I didn't realize that Barnabas was his cousin. So. Yeah, we, I remember when we talked why they had that dispute and we thought maybe Barnabas was uh, uh, kind of like more teacher or, you know, and Paul was more like, no, he's not useful in my ministry, I don't want him. And so we, we were trying to figure out why Barnabas want wanted him. Yeah, but they are related. He's his cousin. Uh, uh, Mark, he was young, you know, he was... Like a teenager. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's, that's right. You, you mean what? So he just had along. 
Probably, yes. It, that's very interesting that he decided to join Barnabas and go to this Antioch and then, you know, to go on that missionary trip. But then he returns back to Jerusalem. And Peter is still in Jerusalem. And then we see him with Peter in Rome already. So he joined Peter. He must have heard Peter many, 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 many times. His testimony. That is why they say that the Gospel of Mark is the Gospel of Peter, actually. You know, so it's the message is basically coming from Peter. So. Also in Mark, um, let me see, Mark 14, verse 51, that could be Mark as well. Can you read it for us? A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. Yeah, possibly, yes. No one would know that. No, no one would know. Gospels. That's right. That's right. That's right. But I know, yeah, they, 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 there is this uh, interpretation. Okay. So you didn't know that he was cousin with Barnabas. Okay. No, and it says it very clearly in here. So then Mary would have been his aunt. So I, I like to put all the yeah. people together. So. That's right. <laughs> more people, family. More, yes, yeah. But because, you know, you have uh, one sentence in one epistle, one sentence in another, you don't connect all of them, you know. Mm -hmm. You kind of read about them and forget, you know. So it's, it's very good to have a look at all the places. Then you have, like, a better picture. Okay. So, uh, Jody? What, 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 did, what did you learn about Mark today? Just maybe one thing or some. You said he was a follower, but yet um, it's interesting because he writes a book that's included, you know, it's in the, in the Bible. So following the apostles, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. So obviously you don't have to be a, a pastor or somebody chosen. It, is you have the Holy Spirit, you you have there you have a little but not power but influence. Yeah. Um, Isn't that amazing? To make a difference. Yeah. Some commentators call him an ordinary person. He was just like, you know, he wasn't like within the church, he wasn't like someone big or famous. He was an ordinary a helper and still still he was able to mm, he was chosen by God, you know, to do this job, you know. And he did it. You reminded me uh, uh, some uh, verses that we are one body, but for one another, you are members. I remember when I was meditating on these words, I recognized that like serve one another. It means that you never need to be in the position and way that somebody will work, will serve you. You, you, if you are in the Christ body, you need to find something and to serve to one another, to, you know, and when I see this is a huge uh, uh, ministry, what Mark did, you know, because a lot of pastors, a lot of evangelists, a lot of people who devoted their life to God, they need someone who would help. help them. Maybe go and arrange a hotel, you know, place to stay or find food. Or And he was the helper. Uh, he was from the tribe of Levi. And Levi, Levites, they took care of the priests and helped. And they were not the priests themselves, but they were helping to make sure that the temple runs smoothly and everything, you know, that was their job. And Do you know where it says that? That he's from the tribe of Levi? I forgot. Okay, so Barnabas, Barnabas was from the tribe of Levi. Acts uh, chapter 4, verse 36 and 37. And because he was Mark's cousin, which means they are related, that means that Mark is also from the same tribe. Can you read it for us? So 36 and 37? Mm -hmm. A Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. This is Barnabas. 
So he's Levite, he's from Cyprus. That is why when they started their missionary trips, they went to Cyprus first, if you remember. So, because... No, the mother was the Levite, right? All of them, yes, they are. Oh, the, the tribe, this is the tribe, yes. So which means, you see what he did, Barnabas sold his, he was called Barnabas by the apostles. This is not his original name. His original name is Joseph. Why he was called Barnabas? Because, son of encouragement, because he was... He dedicated himself completely, right? He sold his field, he brought it, at the, he put it at the feet of the apostles, you know, for the sake of the ministry. So this is who Barnabas was. Okay, so Bruce, what did you learn about Mark? It's just maybe one thing, one something interesting. Uh, the reason why I asked how old he was is it's almost like he was a student and a helper, just going along doing what he knew best. Yes. Yeah, and if he was from the Levite uh, tribe, he, it's very likely that he saw his family helping with the temple. This is kind of like his his role, helping with the temple. Okay, so Randy. Well, you, you, what I see is he's very faithful because he travels all over in his position and he's following Christ the whole time. Yeah. There's also too many Johns. <laughs> Even in that first part, it says James, brother of John, and then two sentences later it says John, whose name is also Mark. Yeah, but they are different Johns. Not the same John. No. 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 Cheryl? That was going to be what It's just confusing trying to follow who's who. They have numerous names. But now you know. No, no, a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Richard? Something new, something interesting, something? Did you, what I find interesting, what Jody mentioned, that he wasn't like something, he not, was not that famous or important and God still used him. And you see, there are only four Gospels that were written. So later they would try to produce pseudo-Gospels, false Gospels, you know, written by Gnostics, which are completely different, like Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Peter, so, which was not written by Peter at all. So, and God chooses Luke, Mark, and Matthew, and also John to write those four Gospels. You know, Jesus himself doesn't write anything. And Mark is the least important out of the four. So, and God still uses him. He's useful in my ministry. Which means if you are not a preacher... Because, or if you are not, you know, someone who can speak the word of God boldly, but you still can help and contribute to the ministry, is an important role as well. I think that's a big lesson, right? Even if you are young. Kevin, Kristen? I'm just excited that we're going to be doing Mark for the sermon, uh, yeah, for the sermon series, because Mark was written for the Romans show, and shows Jesus as a man of action, very, the narrative is very action-oriented, quick-paced, it's shorter, but especially there's a lot of spiritual warfare in Mark where every, constantly Jesus is casting out demons, and it's good for today because of all the craziness going on to encourage believers, we don't have to be afraid because Jesus has omnipotent power. We just watched a service yesterday on live stream from a John Ramirez, who's a Baker Bookhouse author, in California, I mean, he cast out tons of demons from these people yesterday, and it was very moving, and it was in California, but it was live stream. These people were delivered in Jesus' name, very simple, and so this is still going on today, so it's, it's very reassuring for us that it's not, it's not on us at all, and Jesus is still acting in power in massive ways, so Mark is going to be great 
for all the stuff. Just see those examples. So. Okay. Mark too because it is an example that there's no excuse not to get involved in the ministry. <laughs> Zero. Because he wasn't highly skilled, he wasn't exceptional, but look at he ended up writing part of the Bible. So there Mark is a great example of this. No excuse not to become part of a ministry. Yes. And be a part of it. a person can do great things. Right? Yes, with the help of the Lord, yes. That's right, that's right. Tatiana? Oh, you, you, you already? It's, uh, for American people, it's very easy to understand a key. John or Mark, it's easy because they have middle names. <laughs> we don't have middle names. We don't have middle names. Where we are coming from, we don't have middle names. So that is why... They, they started, uh, yeah, 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 they started reintroducing, but under the Soviets we, patronymic, yeah, we, we never used middle name, but your dad's name, you know, but this is not middle name, it is patronymic, this is the name of your dad, so this is what, more, <laughs> Think about this as a middle name, his middle name. <laughs> so, so, okay. Robin? Mm, I think that for me, he's, um, he represents, um, he's been called, he's called by different people, he's called by different things, so he remained humble. Um, he didn't feel really to leave, but he didn't, he, he truly was committed to the Lord, wherever he was put, and wherever he was. Didn't have any problem in and out of that. Mm. So I mean, that just speaks a lot to us. We never know. We will never know what we have to do. Yeah. Will we be ready? Amen. Amen. Kirk? Um, I think um, part of this, too, was at the very beginning where he disappeared, you know, where he left uh, the ministry. I mean, I think this shows that. We can all do that. There's no compassion. That's right. That's right. That's right. Not be absent from his visibility, or we could literally be working on another. Right. You know, we could be growing in the faith. So he demonstrates that faith, never question. Yeah, but he also coming coming back to specifically to Paul to work with Paul, right? So, yeah. Because I'm sure Mark knew that Paul did something. Like yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> he knew. And so then, as, maybe as a young man, he then had to go to a, his mentor that doesn't like him, right? Uh -huh. Not really mentoring his step on but, uh, you know, and potentially suffer it out for a while. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Bob? Well, uh, pretty much everything I heard today is new to me. I, um, uh, you know, I was uh, born Lutheran, baptized as an infant, confirmed in the church in the eighth grade. That's probably, um, although I was always going to church and read the Bible, the, I've never been to a Bible class after getting you know, confirmation. So for my uh, awareness, you know, I had a really, really strict Lutheran minister, and everything we did was rote memorization. <clears throat> so my past familiarity with Mark was, as I was reciting the books of the Bible, he came second, right? And that's Mark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and as far as I knew, you know, as a young guy reading the King James Version, which I didn't really understand, um, he was one of those old guys with long beard and probably long hair, and he had in trouble with the Romans once in a while. I don't know. I never really studied who these people were. The Bible, we read the Bible, but in terms of who they were, their perspectives, where they came from, the culture, it's sort of new to me in this church, and so it's very rewarding to hear these things. So pretty much everything that was said is new for me, right? Okay, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So, Vlad, everybody, okay. So let us pray.
Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for this time spent together and thank you so much for um, Mark, the evangelist. Uh, we thank you so much for all the lessons uh, you've been teaching us through all the passages we've been reading. Most importantly, that we can serve you no matter how ordinary we think we are or unimportant, we still are members of your church and we can be helpful and we can be useful in your ministry and we can sometimes leave. Uh, we may sometimes get busy with our own lives, but uh, like Mark, help us, Jesus, to come back uh, and to, to, to be used by you, by your grace and your ministry. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.